Morning. You join me in Geneva. Let's get into the car. Let me explain more. So yes, the Lotus is in Geneva for two reasons. One, I drove up because it's Geneva Motor Show. We're getting on to that in a bit. Second reason is this is probably the last time I'll ever drive it. Let me explain. If you guys have been around for a while, you'll know that I actually picked my Lotus up from a garage here in Geneva. Recently, and I'll talk about this more in the very near future, I've ended up deciding there are gonna be some pretty big changes in my life. I'm gonna tell you more about this in a bit, but I may, and I know you're gonna think, wow, well that was, that was quick. I may be moving again somewhere quite a bit further. That means I'm not sure what I'm doing with the car. Seeing as I drove it to Geneva for the Geneva Motor Show, I ended up deciding that it was probably just best for me to leave it at the dealership in what's called here a depot vente or consignation, which basically means leaving it in the garage. They put it up for sale. If it sells, they take a small commission. And there we go. At least it's in the garage. I don't need to take care of it. And I can sort of decide on what I'm going to be doing in my life in the next few months and not have to worry about the car. And it will get sold. So I am currently driving it to Lotus Geneva in order to leave it there and then conveniently going to Gen the Geneva car shop where I'll be able to look at what could potentially be some cars, some new cars that have just come out that could maybe replace this. So it's pretty perfect really. I'm dropping my car off right before the Geneva Motor Show. This could be a great idea or the dumbest one ever because I'll end up being a very expensive day. I'm gonna miss this baby. Look at it. The manual, it's so, so nice and clean and, ah. Oh. Is it bad that I'm already kind of starting to regret this? I don't really know. I feel like I may regret this. There may be some epic stuff at Geneva Motor Show, which will be just as good, if not better, as this. So, you know, could be worth it. I to leave them in the seat. Switzerland, do not speed in Switzerland. It's a shame to like lose my license the last time I drive this car. That would kind of suck. Very slippery. 500 meters. This is my last 500 meters in this car. <laughs> That's my crying face. Also, guys, I'm rocking like a Geneva kind of look blazer and trousers and stuff today. Even got in the nice watch out for those watch heads who ask me what I wear. This is a Tag Heuer Octavia. A blazer. Don't know where the blazer's from, actually. It's also a tag scarf. Uh, don't know where the shirt's from, and I think these are Zara trousers. There you go, a little fashion update for you. This is it, I guess. I figure I'm just gonna drive in. I'm gonna do all the paperwork and stuff, and I shall report right back to you. Well, it turns out I basically just need to take my bag out of it, and we're good to go. Oh, I'm gonna have to come back another day for all of this other stuff. Right, well, this is it. Last lock. Bye, baby. <laughs> Uh, gotta move on. Okay. Ah, you're filming. I am. For those who don't know, this is Alex Smolik. <laughs> he is one of the all-time originals of uh, the car spotting world. Exactly. So very cool. And we're in an Infinity. What's it called? Infinity Q60s. <laughs> V6, 405 brake horsepower, oh. 375. Oh. 10 meters of torque. Naughty! Turns out parking during the Geneva, G -G Geneva? During the Geneva Motor Show is an absolute nightmare. Parking next to the planes. Yeah, they, 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 we are the, this is the last plane in the airport. <laughs> I've made it to the show, guys, and I'm already driving, so I've come straight to the Tag Heuer stand. Tag Heuer is what I'm going to be using as my base over the next two days whilst at the Geneva Motor Show to edit videos, to meet people, and I'm just very excited. They've kindly provided me with this very exciting new watch. So I'm trying to set a lap time, and I've put on my Insta story that people can come here and race against me, so hopefully my lap time is not going to be completely horrendous. In today's video, what we're going to do is we're going to go around the show and I'm going to tell you what I find to be the all-out, no, money no objects, most exciting cars here. And then today, I'm going to come back and as you saw this morning, I dropped my car off at the garage, I'm going to come back and we're actually going to do a little bit of car shopping, effectively. So we're going to go around, look at all the different cars available and try and decide on what a replacement for my Lotus could potentially be. So that's gonna to be tomorrow's video. Leaving the Tag Heuer stand then, and we're gonna go look for the most exclusive, the most exciting cars that have been released here in Geneva today. And as I said, tomorrow are the ones that I'm actually interested in for me personally. Welcome, welcome to the Geneva Motor Show. There is a big crowd forming here at the Aston stand, and there are two cars 
undercover. Let's see what these could be. First proper launch of the Geneva Motor Show so far, 2018. Let's kick this off. Hopefully, they have some exciting news for us. Dr. Andy Palmer, President and Chief Executive Officer, Aston Martin Lagonda. What could be a better match than Tag Heuer? I'd now like to uh, welcome on stage Jean-Claude Vivet, CEO of Tag Heuer. I'm thrilled to be there with Tag Heuer, be part of it. <laughs> I am sure we will succeed. And Tag Heuer has a long history with car racing, motor racing. This. Now, even though I know it wasn't released here, this is the McLaren Senna. Now then, 800 is the number to remember with this car. 800 brake horsepower, 800 kilos of downforce, 800 newton meters. I was not convinced when I first saw this in pictures, but seeing it here in real life, it does actually look very cool. Carbon everywhere, loads of glass. However, there is something that they have released here, which is the big brother to this, a track only version of the Senna. And this time it goes from 800 kilos of downforce to 1000. That is this, the Senna GTR. It's gonna cost about a million pounds, not confirmed. They're gonna make 75 and it's track only on slicks. What a beast. This is the second very, very exciting car, which has actually literally just be, been released. It's called the Rimac C2. Now then, the stats on this are borderline unbelievable. It is just insane. First of all, the one that blew me away the most, 2,300 newton meters of torque, 1,914 horsepower. This thing will do not 60 in under two seconds and 1.85 seconds. And then just, you know what, I'm not even gonna, you, you get the point. It is very, very quick. Fully electric, 650 kilometers on a charge and just an absolute, I think, fantastic looking car. And you can tell that these guys are not messing around anymore. They're gonna plan to make about 150 of these so they, their numbers are going way up. They're here and they're here to stay and they're the first people to have properly done electric hypercars and we're talking uh, the new Tesla Roadster kind of numbers but these guys have been doing it for longer so the range everything I'm honestly blown away by this it is very cool right we've come to Mansouri I'm not talking too loud because I'm not a massive fan but I figured you know it's very expensive very special we might as well show it to you this is a Bugatti Veyron in a um, interesting livery and look at this it's got Swarovski diamonds as a Bugatti sign They've also done a Rolls-Royce Phantom, the new one, the Phantom 8, with um, uh, this colored interior. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. This is the Mansori 720. I actually quite like this one. Let me know what you think again down below. Mansori is always an interesting place to come. This car caught me by surprise. It is a five-door version of the AMG GT, well, actually the AMG GTR. So it's got the V8, it's got the same engine, is, I think kind of funky. The only thing is if I had an AMG GTR and now they just came out with this, I'm not sure how happy I'd be, but looks looks pretty good. This is a lovely place to sit. You're gonna see a bunch of people coming around on the sides. People are taking photos. This feels amazing in here. You've got the massive screens like in the S-Class, E-Class. Uh, this whole new redesigned sort of center panel with all these touch screens. This is actually very nice. I'm much more convinced by the interior than I am by the exterior. I could probably fit in there. I'm not sure they would let me though. <laughs> we, we would have some very angry people. Hi, are you filming? Hey, hi. We were just talking about whether I could get in. Uh, well, it's closing now. Well, that, that's gone brilliantly. I filmed on this camera though, so here's that clip. Look who's here. How you doing? Good. We're doing street gasm together. The we're car, looking for a car. practical car. Go look at the boot. Look, it's maybe perfect. Mercedes, maybe this one. May I, Mercedes, please slide into my uh, DMs if you can. <laughs> Booster Boris. It's like YouTube convention. It is a YouTube convention here. <laughs> it is a bit of a YouTube convention. This is who's been filming me. Hello. One thing about the Geneva Motor Show is it's very, very hard to film. Right now I'm doing the dramatic, classical journalist walking through a nice area, but secretly, Patrick who's holding the camera has nearly died about nine times. On that jolly note, we are gonna keep walking through the Geneva Motor Show, try and show you the highlights as we go. It's a hard place to film because there's about 150 people around every car and there's just so many things to remember. You nearly literally just died just then. So this is the brand new concept car, BMW M8 Grand Coupe. And I actually don't know too much about it, but I know that uh, Parker over here knows everything there is to know about the car. So why don't you- Expert on the car. Um, 4,042 horsepower. Yes. It's the successor to the BMW i1.5 concept yeah. uh, back in I 1945. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's staggering. Beast. Staggering. Anyway, so yeah, tune in for more of this uh, later. 
<laughs> this is great banter. And in this segment, Seb's Geneva top tips. A lot of this at car shows, walking to get comfortable shoes. Always take the escalator and not the stair to save those steps. Have an unpaid friend to hold the camera for you. I can highly recommend this model, recently released. It's called the Patrick. Oh shit, I'm just falling. <laughs> Always fully charge your phone to arm. I screwed it. Always know where to find the spec sheet so that you look like you know what you're talking about. Learn how to spot car spotters in their natural habitat because it is very entertaining. I've spotted another one. I've spotted another one doing his work. This is the new DJI Phantom 4. They've stepped up their game this time with the drone. That was a really bad joke. <laughs> it's an Airbus flying thing. It's. It looks very cool. I, I assume it flies. That's probably what those are for. Where'd you park that? <laughs> That's what I wonder. You can't just go in an underground car park with that. So, what is that? I mean, I'm lost for words. I, I, I don't know what that is. I don't know why they're playing dramatic music here. <laughs> I'm getting, I'm tired, what's going on? Nothing particularly new here. Did the door just close without, yeah. It, nothing particularly new here. Right, well, anyways, Koenigsegger Gira. So you guys know this car, I wanted to show it to you mainly because of the spec, but 1,500 horsepower, electric engine, petrol engine, it's got these incredible exhausts, uh, these things, they're going to make 80 of them, I think most of them are already sold. This one, with the sort of very light baby blue and then dark blue carbon, is absolutely stunning. So I figured it was, for me, one of the highlights of the show, I wanted to show it to you, and then we're going to pop over right over here to show you another car right now, because it seems like we're in the expensive corner. This is definitely the expensive area because look, we've got the brand new Bugatti Chiron Sport. This thing is a total beast. It's got just as much power as a normal Chiron. It's got different exhausts. It's got a carbon uh, wiper and it's basically just lighter, nimbler than the normal Chiron. I think it looks fantastic and it costs obviously a fair amount more than the normal one. But if you're already spending three million on a on a Chiron, you can probably spend three million two hundred fifty thousand dollars on this because realistically if you're at the point of spending that much on a car you can move up so we got to share on sport i love it let's actually go see another hypercar why don't we a bunch of people have been asking me what my favorite car from the show is now then i would have to say that it is this the bagani zonda bucket i know it's not new and i know it's maybe not like the latest greatest supercar but i really have a soft spot for these and this one they're only going to make three i believe they cost an absolute fortune it's got this really nicely cut um, sort of windscreen which I think just makes it look unbelievable full carbon fiber so you've got the blue carbon with the black carbon it's just oh mwah, beautiful and this is now apparently the final or the final of the last of the last one which was previously the last final Zonda ever I don't know if you're following because I've lost track I'm pretty sure the last one was supposed to be made like nine years ago now we're gonna do another dramatic walk while the cameraman nearly dies so that I can tell you that now we're gonna head back to where we've been basically using as a base all day, which is the Tag Hoyer stand. Very cool to see this morning them announcing their partnership with Aston Martin. If you're wondering where the new Ferrari and Lamborghini and Porsche and everything were, they're coming in tomorrow's video, because tomorrow's video is going to be all of the cars that I'm considering at the Geneva Motor Show to replace the Lotus. If you're wondering what's coming next after the Lotus, you're gonna have to see tomorrow's video. Anyways, let's go back to the Tag stand before you fall, because you are about to, oh, hey, that was smooth. Back at the tag stand now then, and we are finally gonna end today. It's such a long, long thing to do here at the Geneva Motor Show. Some cool watches here, but to give you another little sneak peek at what's gonna be coming tomorrow, this is going to be a huge talking point. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the slightly different outlook at the Geneva Motor Show, and I look forward to seeing you for the next video tomorrow. Cheers, guys. Please remember to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And bye bye